What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Steam Deck accessories. So, since I got my Steam Deck about two weeks ago, I've bought a ton of different accessories. I've found some stuff around the house that's been really useful. And uh, some of this stuff I really like, some of it I don't like. I've got some buying advice. Uh, and, you know, let's just get into it. So, here are the accessories that I've been using with the Steam Deck so far. And we're gonna start by taking a look at the Steam Deck itself. Let's see if the camera will focus. As you can see, I've got a kind of, uh, I think it's a TPU case for it. And uh, overall, I, I like this thing. This thing is sold on Amazon and there's a bunch of different sellers for it. You can get it in a couple of different colors. I got it in this blue color that's available in black. I think I saw it in yellow as well. Uh, and overall, it's pretty nice. What it allows you to do is kind of put it down without having to worry about scratching it up on a table or, you know, if I'm out on the back deck, I can put it down on, you know, anything without really having to worry about it too much. It does provide a little bit of impact protection. I don't know if I'd really want to drop it with this thing on it, but I suppose it would help a little bit. Uh, and it does add a little bit of, I don't know, customization style to it. If you like the blue, you like the blue. If you don't, you don't, but uh, I kind of like it. Uh, the one downside that I would say with this thing, well, a couple of downsides is it does add considerable heft to the Steam Deck, which is already very heavy. And it does interfere a little bit with the face buttons here and with the D-pad, uh, kind of if you're trying to hit up and to the left or to the left, there is a little bit of a cutout there, but it does interfere with your thumb a little bit. If you got big thumbs like me anyway, uh, there is some interference there. Overall, though, I think it's pretty nice. Um, sometimes I play with it off, sometimes I play with it on, but if I'm kind of walking around with it a little bit, I tend to like it on for right now. Uh, let's move this off to the side right now. I'm going to talk about some stands. So I've got a few different stands here. Uh, now, this one is pretty interesting. Again, I, I, I'll put a link in the description to all of these products. Most of them are gonna be affiliate links on Amazon, but there'll be some that are not on Amazon as well. Uh, this is a stand that says it's specifically made for the Steam Deck itself. And it's just kind of this light plastic with kind of a hinge back here. So you can set it to a couple of different settings as far as the angle goes. Um, and it's got this little like special cutout here. So the Steam Deck, oh, bump the camera there, sorry. Steam Deck has these vents on it where it, this is the intake and the out, output is up here, but you don't want to block that obviously. So it's got these vents on the stand, but I mean, the chances of you putting this thing down on the, on the stand and lining those vents up correctly, I think are probably pretty low but I guess it's good that they're there anyway. Even if they're not lined up perfectly, there's probably some airflow. Uh, with the cover on it, this thing holds it pretty well and it holds it great uh, with the cover off of it. Uh, this one's pretty st sturdy. It was pretty cheap. Offers a couple of different angles and folds up to be somewhat portable. Uh, we got this other one here. This is a uh, J Socks. Uh, this one's actually made out of aluminum it's a little bit fancier. It's got some rubber gripping uh, in this slot here. Uh, again, it does a fine job at what it's supposed to do. You can just kind of place your Steam Deck right in it, holds it in place. I find this one's just a little more wobbly with the case on it, but if I take the case off, and this case is actually kind of a bit of a stretch to get off. You kind of want to go off the bottom there. With the case off, it fits in much better and it's much more sturdy. So, you know, obviously you can't ding them for not allowing for that case. Uh, but this one, I, I feel it's just a little bit nicer. Whoops. This one's just a little bit nicer looking. Uh, the aluminum is nicer. Uh, it seems to be a little more stable on the table. Uh, I don't know, they're both pretty nice. I'll put a link to both of those in the description. One more thing. Uh, stand that I've been using quite a bit. You can see this one's a little bit dirty because I've had it for a long time. This is a Nintendo Wii U stand. So this is for the tablet part of the Wii U. They actually sell these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But I, I, I've been using this for all sorts of stuff. You know, phones, iPads, whatever. Uh, with the Steam Deck, it holds it great. So if you already have one of these around, you know, just use that. It's, it's fine. Just use that, fellas. It's, it's good. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put this back here. The next thing uh, that I really like so far is this guy. This is a USB-C hub. Uh, and what it allows you to do is plug in a bunch of devices and charge your Steam Deck. And uh, by devices, I mean, it's got a ton of different stuff in it here. It's got a network port, so you can do wired ethernet. Uh, it's got a USB-C charging port and it is PD uh, compatible. So with the charging of the Steam Deck, you need two numbers to kind of, or two stats to kind of keep in mind. One is 45 watts. You want 45 watts minimum from your charging solution, and you want it to be PD compatible, which means it's kind of it'll use the PD standard for fast charging. So this will allow you to do that. It also has two USB-A ports. It has a micro SD card, a regular SD card, HDMI 4K 60 hertz out. Uh, this thing does quite a bit. And then I also added this little right angle adapter to it, uh, which just makes it a little more convenient when you plug it in because as we know, on the Steam Deck, the charging port is on the top. So if we use this little right angle adapter, I don't know, I think that looks a little neater. What do you guys think? Is that a little neater? I don't know, it still looks janky. I wish that they had done kind of like the Nintendo Switch and put the charging port on the bottom so that eventually when the Steam dock comes out, you'll just be able to, you know, stick it on there like a like a Nintendo Switch. Uh, I think that's a more elegant solution than uh, on the top like this. All right, so once we've got the hub hooked up, there's a bunch of stuff we can do from there. Uh, so I'm actually gonna put this up front so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'll plug it back in. Uh, and again, I'll put all links to all this stuff. This is this one's made by Cable Creations. I don't remember where I got that little 90 degree adapter. The package just says Cellularize Emi. I, I don't know. Again, I'll put links. You guys can check it out. Once we do that, we're going to want to plug some stuff into the Steam Deck. So the first thing we're going to do is an external display. So let me move a couple of these controllers out of here. Now, I've reviewed displays like this in the past. I'm sure you've seen them on other YouTube channels as well. And they come in all sorts of different flavors and manufacturers. This is just a 1080p uh, basic display. It's about 15 inches. It's basically the kind of thing you'd find on a laptop. I'm sure that's where they source the parts. And it's really small. It's really portable. It's perfect for portability if you want just a slightly bigger screen while you're playing your, your Steam Deck. Maybe you're at a hotel or... Who knows, you wanna play some two player games. It's a little hard to see on a Steam Deck screen with two player. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger and it's super easy to set up. Basically, you're just gonna turn it on and we'll plug it into the HDMI port on our dock, dock here. The Steam Deck screen will turn off and it'll appear uh, on this little portable screen. Let me make sure there's no glare there. And then you're just, you're just controlling it now. You know, this is now just the screen of the Steam Deck being displayed on, you know, the TV of your choice. Of course, you can use a 4K display. You can use any display that you have basically around because, you know, because this thing is a PC, it'll support a lot of different resolutions. Um, but, you know, this thing makes it really portable. It makes it really easy to do. And like I said, if you want to play like some two-player games, maybe you're into fighting games, who knows what you're into. I don't, I don't judge, you know, whatever you're into, man. You do you. Uh, this makes it a little easier. Uh, one of the problems I have with the Steam Deck is the D-pad. I don't like the D-pad at all. In fact, I have a support ticket in because I think it, feel like the D-pad is so bad that there's possibly something completely wrong with it. So one of the first things I did was try out a bunch of Bluetooth controllers. Um, I have used, this is an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. I've used this. I've used this 8-bit Do. Pro 2 controller, which is about, I don't know, an eighth of the price of the Xbox Series X or the Xbox uh, uh, Pro controller here, the Elite. Uh, and I got to say, I really like this thing a lot. Uh, you can also get these ones that are don't have handles on them and they're very portable. So like if you're if you're really into portability, you can just throw this in a backpack. Obviously, it takes up a lot less room than something with the big handles on it. 
Uh, but for me, I really like this controller. I find this controller to be one of my favorites. And because it's so inexpensive, um, I've bought quite a few of them to use for different uh, PCs or uh, for the Steam Deck. Uh, these are also available uh, at retail at Best Buy, I believe. So you can just pick one up. Uh, they have back paddles on them. They have triggers. You know, they have like a full PlayStation arrangement. Uh, and I found them to be very, very versatile for a bunch of different devices for iPhone gaming, Android gaming, Mr. Steam Deck, PC. I believe some of them even work with the Switch. I don't know if this one does. Uh, you know, make sure you read the box. Make sure you know what it works with. I think this one might work with the Switch, actually. You know, they're, they're really versatile and they're really inexpensive. Um, they used to have problems with the D-pads. I think they've pretty much solved that. The D-pad is much better than the one on the Steam Deck. Uh, and I've really come to enjoy these. But they come in a different bunch of different flavors. Like you can get these thin ones. You can use Xbox controllers. I've heard you can use PlayStation controllers. I have not gotten that to work yet personally. Uh, so I've stuck to basically uh, Xbox or PC compatible controllers and had good luck with that. If you are into fighting games, I highly recommend, again, by 8BitDo, their arcade stick. This one is obviously customized. Usually all these buttons are red, and the arcade stick itself, or the joystick itself, is red as well. Uh, I love this thing. It works with the Switch. It works with Bluetooth. It has a dongle that you can plug in for 2.4G uh, kind of wireless. It It's really versatile, again. Uh, it works with a bunch of different stuff. I've upgraded the buttons and the joystick, so it feels like arcade quality parts on mine. Uh, but, you know, again, if you're into fighting games like I am, this thing is wonderful. Or if you're into arcade games, uh, this gives you that arcade feel that you're really after. And these things are actually fairly inexpensive for an arcade stick. I think, uh, you know, under $100, I believe. Uh, these things are really great. I highly recommend them, and they're really fun to customize. I've got a I've got a video on my channel about customizing these things. It's easy to do. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's a lot of fun. It's a nice weekend project. Uh, but if you're in a fighting game or arcade games, definitely recommend one of these guys. It goes perfectly. It's wireless or wired. Um, great to go. All right, let's talk about sound a little bit. The Steam Deck does have speakers, two front-firing stereo speakers on it which frankly don't sound too bad, but if you want a little something nicer, let's start with headphones. So I got these Sony wireless earbuds. Uh, these guys are noise canceling. They're a little dirty. I've been using them for about a year now. Uh, these things work flawlessly, Bluetooth. Uh, what's nice about these ones is they're kind of flesh color, so people don't notice you have these in as much as something that's like bright white or black. Uh, they blend into your ear a little bit better than uh, most of the stuff that I've found in the past. They sound really good. Uh, they're a little bit expensive, uh, but, you know, you can buy ear pods. Uh, basically, any Bluetooth solution that you have is going to work with the Steam Deck. Again, with the Sony headphones, I've been using these. I think these are the WXM. I don't know. I'll, I'll get the model number in the description of the video and a link to it. Uh, these things have been great. They are, again, noise canceling. They are rechargeable. The I think the battery life on these is around 10 hours of playing music. Uh, again, Bluetooth functionality has been flawless. These things have worked really well with the Steam Deck as well. Basically, everything that is Bluetooth that I've tried to use with the Steam Deck has just worked, which has been great. Now, what if you don't need privacy? You just want better sound. You're playing some two-player games. You know, you want both people to hear it, but you want a little more oomph than what the Steam Deck is putting out. How about a little Bluetooth speaker? Again, this thing has worked magnificently. Uh, you just pair it with the Steam Deck. It's super easy to pair stuff with the Steam Deck. Uh, you just hit the Steam button here, and then I'll use this Xbox controller. You just go down to Settings. You got a little Bluetooth here. And as you can see, the, it shows the Xbox Elite is here. Uh, the Bose, this is this little Bose uh, sound link. See if it'll automatically connect. There we go. And it's paired. So theoretically, did it just call Steam Deck? Uh, as you can see, hopefully you can hear that. It is now working 
as intended. If you want even something with a little more bass to it, I've been using this Sonos Move a little bit lately. Uh, this offers like regular Sonos compatibility, like with the whole home uh, networking, but it also has kind of regular old Bluetooth. Uh, so you just hit that and you can pair it just like any other device. And I'll tell you, this thing sounds amazing uh, for a Bluetooth speaker. Obviously it's huge, uh, you know, it's almost as big as the Steam Deck itself. <laughs> uh, but it's it, it sounds pretty nice. But, you know, if you want something for uh, not necessarily private use, if you want to play a couple two-player games or something like this. Uh, the next is charging. So one thing you probably want to get is just a USB-C to USB-C cable. Uh, you probably have a bunch of these around, USB-C to USB-A cables. These have been common in devices for a long time, like uh, hooking up USB-C devices to your computer. Uh, I've got a ton of these things around, but what I don't have so many of are USB-C cables. And you, know, you wanna get a pretty good one from a reputable brand, uh, but you don't wanna pay a lot. So shop around for these. I'll put a couple of links in the description to a couple that I've used. Uh, but once you get one of these, uh, you're going to be able to accessorize pretty easily. You can plug this directly into the Steam Deck and then into a USB-C controller, uh, like the Xbox controller or these 8-bit Do controllers. Um, you can also charge directly from a USB-C PD output device. So, all right, this is a little bit weird, guys. I'm sure you've seen this thing in the background here. Uh, but what this is, is a Milwaukee... Uh, power inverter that just hooks up to regular per Milwaukee power tool batteries. So, you know, if you're like me, I've got a few of these things around of different manufacturures, you know, Ryobi, uh, DeWalt, Milwaukee. Uh, I don't know if any other companies make exactly this thing, but this Milwaukee one is kind of ingenious. Not only does it have, uh, you can see it's actually powering my display over there. Not only does it have regular household 120 volt plug, uh, which you can turn on and turn off. But it also has two USB ports at the top of it. One of them is a A and one of them is a C. And the C port is PD compatible. And this thing outputs 175 watts or up to 175 watts, which is great because you only need 45 to charge your Steam Deck. So what you can do is you can just plug your Steam Deck right into something like this. You gotta turn it on there. And we're just gonna use it on our pad here. And then if we hit our button on the side, you're gonna see, well, our battery is still full, but you can see that it is actually charging off of this. Now, obviously this thing is way too big to be portable. If you want something for on a plane or if you're traveling, get one of the anchor batteries. All you gotta know is two stats. Is it PD compatible for the fast charging on the Steam Deck? And is it greater than 45 watts? Look for around 60 watts probably and you'll be safe. I'll put a link to one of the anchor batteries I've used in the past. The only reason I don't have one right here is because my mother stole it about a month ago because she lost power at her house and she hasn't given it back yet. I think she's gonna be, she's gonna be keeping that one. So you're definitely gonna want a couple of USB-C cables, maybe a USB-A to C cable for fight sticks or anything, because you can actually now plug controllers in to the USB-A ports on your USB port or your USB-C hub, uh, which makes it really convenient to, I don't know, maybe you wanna play some Street Fighter V at a friend's house, so you can just bring this kind of setup with you, and you got a nice portable setup. Uh, the beautiful thing about this Milwaukee setup here is that I've been using this for like, I don't know, three hours. I still got half a battery left. I got an extra battery here. I got another fully charged battery in the garage. Look, this is a extremely expensive setup. These batteries cost a fortune. This thing I think was around, I don't know, hundred ish dollars. I'd have to price check it. Uh, but if you already have a bunch of batteries like this, you know, getting an inverter like that for, you know, let's say you want to use it on the back deck or if you want to use it to power something besides just your Steam Deck, but also display, you know, it's a pretty neat little thing. It's got multiple uses. It's not just good for your Steam Deck, 
But like I said, if you're just looking to be on a plane or something, just get yourself a, a portable like phone charger or iPad charger, something that supports PD at 45 watts, and you're going to be good. Uh, I think, oh, one last thing I wanted to mention. Memory cards, fellas. You got to get memory cards. Let's see. Can we get a camera to zoom on that little guy? There you go. One thing you want to know about memory cards is try and buy these locally. Uh, these things are counterfeited all over the place. So if you got an electronic store or a camera store near you, I honestly would try and buy these locally uh, to help from getting them counterfeit. Also, there's one thing you want to know about buying these. There's a lot of different numbers on here. Obviously, the size. This one's only 128 gigs, which is small by today's standards. Uh, but there's an A2 and there's a V30. The V30 is the write speed. We don't much care about that for the Steam Deck. You know, for writing stuff, we're not, you know, what are we saving? Game saves and we're installing games. Installing games is probably going to be more your internet speed than the speed of your, um, your uh, SD card. What you are concerned about is that A2. You wanna make sure for gaming devices that you get a fast read speed. And A2 is demarking the read speed. So make sure whatever you're getting has that A2 read speed on it. Uh, other than that, Samsung, SanDisk, um, I've never had problems with either of those brands. Uh, they've been pretty good, pretty reliable. The main thing is just try to make sure that you are not getting you know, a counterfeit card because they're everywhere. And I've been a photographer for a long time and I've seen a lot of a lot of people very disappointed by counterfeit cards. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's my video. There's a ton of accessories out there. I think that over the next couple of years, too, we're going to see a lot of interesting uses for the Steam Deck, as well a lot of interesting a lot of interesting accessories for it. So I'm going to keep my eyes open for new accessories for the Steam Deck. Uh, let me know if you guys have found anything really cool. My favorite thing right now, obviously, is this little inverter. I mean, this thing is running the TV and the Steam Deck. Uh, I could even plug in my USB speaker to it, have all that stuff being charged and running off of this. If I start running low on juice here, you know, I'd swap out the battery. I'm good to go for hours here. I'm good to go for hours. It's stupid, but it's working. <laughs> it's not stupid if it works. It's not stupid if it works. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to drink some coffee, maybe a beer later. Hope to see you soon. Bye.